Hi, and welcome to our poster presentation at Solar Basis 2021. Let's start today by marveling at the beauty of the parabolic trough. It's a lovely piece of engineering, but it has this drawback that the achievable concentration is so limited. What if there was a way to increase the concentration onto this tube, perhaps by more than an order of magnitude? My name is Håkon Jonsson. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at NTNU, and I'm really excited today to present this poster where we attempt to do just that. This work is done in collaboration with my co-authors Juan Mignano at UPM in Spain and Jan Torgersen here at NTNU. When you want a line focus concentrator, you typically start with a two-dimensional concentrator, and then you extrude it in the third dimension to create a line focus. This works well, but there's one big problem. This approach is limited by the two-dimensional concentration limit, which is orders of magnitude lower than the three-dimensional limit. So to reach higher concentration, we are going to need another approach. Our goal is to create a trough-like solar concentrator designed for tubular receivers that is able to concentrate beyond this two-dimensional limit. To do that, we combine the idea of attenue squeezing with the idea of tracking integration. So how can this be done? Let's start by looking at a simple two-dimensional concentrator with a tubular receiver. We want to increase the concentration onto this receiver. What if we just add another concentrator and align it to the same receiver? Now we have doubled the primary reflector area without changing the receiver area. So we should get double the concentration, right? Of course, this is not going to work in two dimensions because these secondary mirrors overlap. But we have a third dimension at our disposal. So we can add some concentration about the other axis. And now each primary only needs half the length of the secondary. So light from the green part of the primary only reaches the green part of the secondary. And light from the red part of the primary only reaches the red part of the secondary. In three dimensions, we have actually doubled the concentration onto this receiver. And this is the basic concept that we are working on. To further increase this concentration, we can increase the number of concentrators that all concentrate to the same receiver. Here is an example of a design with six such concentrators. And in the same way, each segment from the primary reflector redirects light to its own segment in the secondary reflector, while they all redirect to the same tubular receiver. The drawback of this approach is that it's going to need two-axis solar tracking, so we need a new tracking approach as well. Tracking about the primary axis can still be done using rotation, just like a parabolic trough, but when it comes to the secondary axis, it's possible to simply laterally translate the secondary reflector so that it is always aligned to the light from the correct segment from the primary. This is known as tracking integration. The big question now is, does this work? To try, we optimize two design examples. The first example is designed to be combined with a north-south aligned single axis external tracker. We optimized and simulated it using ray tracing where we assumed ideal mirrors and we took manufacturing tolerances into account by simulating it under light with an angular extent of plus minus nine milliradians. This concentrator achieves a geometric concentration of 328 at an average yearly efficiency of 80%. That is much more than what a two-dimensional concentrator could achieve. So the answer seems to be yes, it works, at least in simulation. And this of course begs the question, is it possible to go even higher? To find out, we try to drop the tracking integration and to create a concentrator with only a tendu squeezing. This optimized concentrator achieved a geometric concentration of 1183 at 90% efficiency. But unfortunately, this version is going to need two axis external tracking. Let's look a bit closer at these performance claims. Here is a plot of optical efficiency versus concentration ratio. At our conditions, the two-dimensional concentration limit is 111 cents, as shown in green, and we can see that both example designs achieve significantly higher concentration. We optimized and simulated the concentrators under a plus-minus 9 milliradian angular distribution, illustrated by these red circles in angular space. And the plot shows how the acceptance angles of the concentrators are matched to this angular distribution. The first design does tracking integration by translating the secondary reflector, as I showed you previously, and here we can see the range of this tracking. The design has high efficiency from around negative 20 degrees up to around plus 30 degrees. This range is slightly asymmetrical, and that's because the angular distribution seen by the concentrator is also asymmetrical, at least when the concentrator is not installed exactly at the equator. Let's take a small step back and look at what this means. This is a log-log plot with the two-dimensional and three-dimensional concentration limits versus acceptance half angle. Typically, a line focus concentrator operates in this lower regime, while these presented results clearly take us into the regime of the three-dimensional limit. 
This means that we have found a way to create a line focus with significantly higher concentration. And it also indicates that perhaps we could reach modest concentration at significantly higher acceptance angles, which could relax manufacturing tolerances and reduce costs. To summarize, we have demonstrated an approach using attenuated use casing to increase the concentration ratio for line focus concentrators. And we have shown how the required solar tracking can be achieved using tracking integration. I want to thank my collaborators for collaborating on this project. And I also want to thank my university and TNU for funding the research. And finally, thank you all for your attention. I look forward to hearing your thoughts and questions in the discussion area afterwards.